Part of taking care of your children is taking care of yourself. I cannot stress this enough. And if you clicked on this video, that means that you truly need to hear it because as moms, we are living this hustle bustle life. We're busy, we're doing this, we're doing this, taking care of our partner, taking care of our children, doing all of the things, working our jobs or working as an entrepreneur. But when do we invest in ourselves? And so I had to learn this the hard way. So that's why I'm able to share this with you. But when I'm not well, baby, the whole house is discombobulated, okay? let me, I remember I ended up getting sick because I was burning the coal at both ends. I was doing everything from room parent to working a full-time job, doing real estate, um, trying to do all the things for my husband, showing up in the bedroom, um, doing all the things for the kids from soccer to swim to other personal issues going on with my mother who has a serious mental illness. So everything was just stacking up on me. And I knew my body told me I was tired. But instead of setting a boundary with my family and saying, hey, honey, I need you to handle this for me. Hey, kids, please don't wake me up. I just kept going and going and going until my body just shut down and I was sick. This is why a part of taking, your kid, taking care of your kids is taking care of yourself. Yes, I know you got it. Yes, I know you superwoman. Yes, I know they need you because I'm living the same thing. I have a four-year-old, a five-year-old, and a 13-year-old that lives with us. My 13-year-old lives with us half of the month. My four and five-year-old I gave birth to. I also have a stepson. So you all, I know they need us, okay? I know right now. I know that our families and children need us. But if we're not well, what are we going to have to give to them? And I know the saying is so cliche, you can't pour from an empty cup, but it's true. Like you legit cannot pour from an empty cup. If you're not well, and you're not doing the things that you need to do to take care of yourself, mama, who, uh, who, who else gonna do it? But yes, other people are capable of doing it, but the reality is when you are well, you get to be more of a present mom. And I know that's what I want and it's potentially what you want. So yes, our lives are busy. And it's so easy to overlook yourself because you're like, oh, they're little. They don't know how to do anything for themselves. But baby, I have now started making them kids wash them dishes. Not wash them because, you know, they can't wash like we want them to. But like rinsing out their dishes, put them in the dishwasher. My boys are four and five years old. Not even a year ago, one, I felt like they couldn't handle it. But I was very much that mom that felt like I had to do everything for them. Everything. Um, now, some things we need to do. Okay, like you need to make sure you're brushing their teeth, you know, but there are other things that they can do for themselves. Make them put their own clothes on. Make them put on everything that they can, depending on their age. Now, if you have infants, I totally understand. And that's a whole nother part that I'm going to challenge you to make sure that you are asking for help because little people do need a lot and you do have to be fully immersed. I had two kids under two. My boys are only one year and three months apart. So I totally understand. It's a different set of boundaries and questions that you have to ask depending on where you are in motherhood. But regardless, taking care of yourself is the best way to show up for your family. Because no one benefits when you're not well. Um, they just don't. And I want you to know that, because if you're anything like me, taking care of yourself is not a luxury. Taking care of yourself or going for a massage, asking for help, having a house cleaner. Those things are not limited to just Rihanna, Beyonce, and Kim K. They are not. Now, yes, they can afford it at a different level where they can have certain things. And I wish that type of financial success on all of us. I don't want you to think that caring for yourself is only for them, only for celebrities, and only for women that make over, you know, $500,000 or $600,000 or millions of dollars. No, baby. I don't care how much money you make. Your care is critical. I don't care. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care if you're a stay-at-home mom. None of it, period. Take care of you, okay? Uh, if taking care of you doesn't come naturally to you, I'm here to challenge you today. If taking care of yourself does not come naturally to you, then... I want to challenge you to three things, okay? I'm challenging you as from mom to mom. Seriously, right now, I want you to get your pen, get your tablet, 
get your phone, whatever you need to do. And I want you to write down these three challenges, type them out, write them down, whatever you need to do. Okay. Because it did not come naturally to me either. Right. I watched my grandmother care for my family. That's who I grew up with. My grandmother was born in 1924. I can remember vividly being a six-year-old little girl because that's when my grandfather passed away. I can remember at that young age, my grandmother would cook meals. My grandfather would not even be at home and she still would make his plate first, put his plate up, then we could eat. I remember being a young girl and I have the memory of my grandfather would call on our house phone, say that he was on the way home, and my grandmother would run his bath water. This Negro would get into the tub and wouldn't even let the water out to the point where I had gotten, you know, a little bit older, five, six, and my grandmother would make me go take the water out the tub, and maybe he'd have his nasty, dirty ring around the tub, and I'm like, Grandma, I don't want to touch this. That was my example. My mother never was married. Um... My example of a marriage was my grandmother serving my grandfather. She was born in 24. They grew up in a totally different time. In respect to her, I love her. I'm grateful for her. I'm thankful for the things that she introduced to me. And I am able to be submissive to my husband and allow him to lead. But I share that because it also taught me to give, 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 give. So it is hard naturally like it does not come natural to me to just take care of myself okay so i want you to know that i'm not sharing this challenge with you because oh you need another challenge i'm sharing this with you because i have had to challenge myself i have had to get honest with myself and listen to my body um having two kids under two will push you to do that having a traditional husband will push you to do that um, I, had a, I have a mother who has a serious mental illness that I care for, will push you to do that. Being a stepmother, <laughs> um, even when the mama, the biological mo the mom is married, will push you to your limit and make you take care of yourself. So if you are anything like me and it does not come natural to you, here are the three challenges. So the first thing that I want you to do, I want you to say no to any and everything you know you do not want to do. I don't care. Blame it on me. Say, tell them your new best friend, Jess, said you just can't come. Tell them your new best friend, Jessica, said you just can't do it. You ain't going to make it. You, you can't do it for them. Nope. The answer is no. Blame it on me. But I want you to say no to anything that you know you do not want to do, anywhere you know you do not want to be. The challenge from here on out is to say no. You're not missing nothing. If they feelings hurt, we can have it. We can chop it up and have a discussion later. But prioritizing you is what's best. So challenge number one, say no. Okay? Blame it on me. Challenge number two. I would like you to set some boundaries with those that are closest to you. And I know everyone's family dynamics look different. So for some of you, I'm challenging you to set boundaries with your children. If they are old enough to get up and make them and grab them some muffins, grab, put an egg or waffle in the toaster, tell them kids don't wake you up on the weekend unless it's an emergency. If your kids are old enough to get up on their own and put a little pop tart in the, I don't know what y'all eat. Y'all might eat super healthy. You might not have pop tarts at your house, child. Whatever. If they can get them a banana and an orange and an apple by themselves, I am challenging you to set a boundary to let them know on weekends, mommy is going to wake up when she would like to. I mean, if you got something else to do, of course you can't do that. If y'all got sports, whatever. But if you can sleep in and y'all don't have nowhere to go and them kids old enough, set that boundary. For my other mothers who have littles, little, little infants, pretty babies, cute babies, I am challenging you to set boundaries with either your partner or it could be a, another family member that's helping you with your littles. Set a boundary. Let them know that you, it may not seem like letting someone know that you need help is setting a boundary. But if you're constantly doing everything and they don't have to do those things because they think you got it, 
let them know on these days of the week, I need you to show up this way, or will you please do this? However you need to phrase it. But setting boundaries with those closest to you is challenge number two. It is so important for you to set boundaries, okay? It's not a bad thing. It's not you pushing someone away. It's you taking care of yourself, all right? And when we take care of ourselves, we are better people for our beautiful children. Challenge number three is what is, answer this question, get that pen and paper out, paper, phone, what is one thing you love to do before you became a mother? What is that one thing that you no longer do because you're a mom? One of my things that I recognize that I miss that I used to do before I had children was going to events, not clubbing. Those events that happen around 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., networking. Um, it could be book readings. It could be just things in the community. That was my thing. I really like to socialize. I like to network. I like to meet new people. Uh, I, If you can't tell, I'm an extrovert, right? And so I miss that because so many of my conversations are strictly with my husband and my kids. And so I'm adding myself to my calendar. So challenge number three is for you to decide what thing, what's that one thing that you stopped doing when you became a mom that you missed? I am challenging you to add that to your calendar. If it's something that you can do today, whereas mine is something I'm going to have to find something that really strikes my interest. I am going to have to plan around some schedules. But if yours is something like you used to enjoy having sushi, baby, get off work 30 minutes early before them kids have to get picked up and go get you some sushi by yourself so you don't have to share. If it's something that you can do today, the challenge is to do it right now. Okay, or if you can do it tomorrow, you need to do it tomorrow. If you used to always take a bath, but now all you do is get a baby's bath. Give them their bath, and then it's your turn. Also, if, if it's dire need and you need to take that bath tonight, baby, wipe them kids down real quick with a rag like your mom used to do you, okay? And put them in the bed, and then run your bath. If you drink wine, get your glass of wine, okay? I am seriously challenging you. I'm gonna repeat those three challenges because I'm serious about them. One, you saying no, blame it on your girl, Jessica. Second thing, set some boundaries. And the third thing, what's that one thing you stopped doing that you are gonna start back doing because you still can do it, all right? So what's the challenge without sharing what you were able to get done? I want you to drop me a heart if you're gonna try at least one of these challenges that I presented you with today. Lastly, if you're searching for community and accountability, please join my mom first community. The link is in the description. It's a space where we encourage one another. It's a space where we even role play for those mamas that are struggling with setting boundaries or telling their partner, I need help, or I still want to be able to go out and hang out with my friends for brunch. But we role play so you can get them words together. But it is a safe space. It's a community. We hold each other accountable. We encourage one another. Uh, please join us today. Like I said, the link is in the description. As always, abundant love and light to you today and every day. And as always, just do it.